Now it's fine, right? Great. So we'll talk about what each family needs to know about inherited cancer predisposition in children. All the parents always ask the same question. Why my child has cancer? Is it ionizing radiation, magnetic fields, infections, chemicals, diet? Uh, or is it really genetic or inherited? And are the sisters and brothers at high risk? Just to answer quickly, cancer is always genetic as highlighted by the previous speakers. And sometimes cancer is inherited. How to explain that? Cancer does arise from gene mutations. But if the mutation in the parent is a germline mutation, meaning that it happens in the egg or the sperm, it is in the situation heritable and it can cause a familial cancer syndrome. But if the mutation in the cancer cell is somatic, meaning that it's only present in the cancer cells in non-germline tissue, in this situation, it's not heritable. So inherited predisposition to cancer is an important cause of tumors in children. And doctors now are able to recognize clinical situations in which these syndromes are suspected. Recently, and more and more, several cancer predisposing genes have been described and new recommendations are available now for a large number of these syndromes. Why is it important to know them and why is it important for the families to be aware of that? Because it is an evolving subject, because the clinical decisions on the treatment can be challenging because of two reasons. Some syndromes require specific treatments due to toxicity with certain chemotherapy agents or radiation. And in other syndromes, the tumors can be resistant to current treatments. So in 2016, Mario Lynn Youngman, which I collaborate with very closely, established objective criteria, which are called Youngman's criteria for indications for genetic counseling in pediatric cancer. And now there is a question tool, which might be integrated in the, into the new protocols for childhood cancer treatment, looking at six kinds of questions uh, and criteria to evaluate families for potential uh, genetic or inherited cancers. First of all, the family history going over three generation pedigrees, looking at the number of malignancies in family members who are less than 18, or in parents or close family members who are less than 45, or if the parents of the child with cancer are consanguineous. You know that it's a very important subject in our region because consanguinity rates in Lebanon are 30%. In many other countries in the Middle East, in the Amro region or in Asia, they can go up to 40%. So this is uh, very important for us. Also, the second criteria, there are about 55 types of childhood cancers. There's a list of all these cancers which are associated with inherited cancers. And also there are some rare cancers or cancers that occur typically in adults. If we see them in children, then we should, uh, we fit into these criteria and we should do a genetic evaluation. Third criteria, if the genetic tumor analysis on the tumor reveals a defect suggestive of a predisposition to cancer. Finally, if there's a child with more than two malignancies, if there's a child with cancer and a congenital anomaly or other anomalies, and there's a list of all the possible anomalies that we should find, we could find on physical exam that could be associated with cancer. And also if a patient on treatment suffers from excessive toxicity more than we expect from the cancer treatment. So if we have all these criteria, then we should you know, raise the alarm and raise the bell, ring the bell for evaluating for uh, an inherited cancer. I'll show you here the pedigree, examples of pedigrees of a Lebanese family who had two cousins here who died from brain tumors. And then this boy who had leukemia and then developed a, a brain tumor and had cafe au lait spots. And his sister who also had a brain tumor. So this is the boy. He has cafe au lait spots, which we said as are important in the physical exam of children with cancer and developed leukemia and a brain tumor. This is his family, and by looking at them, you cannot tell who has a tendency to develop cancers and who doesn't. And that's his sister who also developed a brain tumor. So the genetic studies on this family revealed something that we see uh, pretty fairly in our region, which is called mismatched gene repair deficiency syndrome, which is due to a mutation in a gene called PMS2 genes, where 
that is inherited in an autosomal recessive way, meaning that both parents are carriers and the child and his sister are affected. Why is it important to identify them? Because we have to do what we say, uh, what we call genetic counseling and implement a surveillance protocol. And we will show why it is important for the families to know that. The mismatch repair system in humans plays a very important role in maintaining the stability of our genome. And the, this MMR system consists of four genes, which are listed here. The loss of the MMR capability increases the susceptibility to develop cancers. And surveillance is very important. Identifying people who are carriers of this before they develop cancer is very important because as you saw in this family that I showed, three children died from brain tumor and the only survivor was the girl, the sister, because she underwent the surveillance once we detected the syndrome on this family and we were able to diagnose her brain tumor earlier and therefore she survived her tumor. Uh, and these families also can develop cancers of the blood, cancers of the brain and cancers of the GI tract and also only the ones who were detected under surveillance, meaning by a preventive colonoscopy or endoscopy, are the ones that are still alive. And this mismatch gene repair syndrome is actually uh, involves the same genes as in the Lynch syndrome. But here we have two hits, meaning two genes are abnormal. And in the Lynch syndrome, the same genes, but only one gene is abnormal. And here, the mean age of diagnosis is mainly adults, whether here the main age is children and it's less common. Here, Lynch syndrome is more common and mainly they develop colon cancer and GI cancers, whether here they can develop multiple childhood cancers. So this is one syndrome that families in our region need to be aware about because it's one of the most common ones that we see. And for carriers, there is a program of surveillance that they should do with colonoscopies, upper GI series, ultrasounds, blood counts, etc., which can help detect cancers early and improve cure and outcome. So the take home message is that this uh, syndromes are still underdiagnosed. They account for a significant amount of cancers. There are diagnostic tools for early detection. Surveillance may save lives, and this is what the families need to know. And new therapies based on molecular characterization of these disorders are available. The second most common syndrome that families need to be aware about is leaf Romani syndrome. Look at this family from Lebanon. They had to undergo five pedigrees before they were diagnosed with leaf Romani syndrome because of these two cousins. One here, the girl who had sarcoma of the eyelid at age two and seven months, and the cousin here, which had leukemia at age four and then neuroblastoma at age five. And it was only after we took a detailed family history because also the subject is a bit taboo. People don't always tell uh, uh, everybody about their family history that we were able to identify these two siblings, the parent here and the parent here, which also carry the leaf Romani syndrome and have been put on a surveillance. Uh, so far, they have not developed cancers, but they have a high risk. So it's better to identify them and detect them early. So leaf Romani is what every fam family needs at least to hear about because it's one of the most common inherited genetic cancer disorders that increases a lot the risk of developing cancer during our lifetime. Sometimes they can start the tumors in childhood and sometimes as young adults. And it's inherited as an autosomal dominant uh, inherited trait, which is one of the oldest known since 1969 by Lee and Romani from the NCI. So this one is caused by a gene mutation in the P53 tumor suppressor genes. And most people who have it have inherited the genetic mutation from a parent, but also leaf Romani syndrome can result from a new gene mutation, which we called de novo in the child without having parents affected or having a family history of cancer. This is why when a child has two different cancers or an atypical cancer, we always test for leaf Romani syndromes. So these people, as we said, develop multiple cancers uh, at a younger age, and they should seek uh, input from specialists and undergo surveillance. Uh, and it's very important to identify them because we, we should try to avoid radiation because they can seem to be more susceptible for toxicity from radiation, and they can have uh, radiation-induced cancers long-term. The last one I wanna raise awareness about is Fanconi anemia. This girl developed leukemia and then a brain tumor 
at, and she was only one year old. But also she had multiple congenital anomalies, cafe ole spots, anal anomalies, a lesion here, abnormal eyes. And she was diagnosed with increased chromosomal breaks, which is consistent with Fanconi anemia. And this instability in the chromosomes is the cause of the cancers in these people. So Fanconi anemia is also underdiagnosed. It should be tested in anybody who is born with thumb anomalies or arm anomalies because the bone marrow and the bones uh, and the kidneys, they form at the same time in the embryo from the mesoderm. And when there is anomaly in one, there could be anomalies in the other. So anybody who develops aplastic anemia, meaning falling of all the blood counts at any age should be tested for Fanconi anemia. And any patient who develops cancers of the head and neck, gynecologic system or GI system at an early age and without any connection with tobacco and alcohol. All the siblings of a Fanconi anemia patient, this is the boy with Fanconi and this is his siblings should be set, tested even if they are asymptomatic. And any child who is undergoing a stem cell transplant for aplastic anemia or cancer should be tested for Fanconi anemia in order to avoid toxicity. There's also a big list of cancer predisposition syndromes that uh, families with all these disorders should be aware about. I will not go over all of them, but I will show quickly a brief photo of these syndromes for uh, the people working in NGOs or people uh, with, who have uh, families, who know families who, are be, who can be affected or who have them. So Down syndrome is associated with leukemia. Treacher-Collins syndrome is associated with uh, all the cancers related to P53. Turner syndrome with ovarian and colon cancer. Greg cephalopolysyndactyly syndrome with brain tumors. Bloom syndrome. Uh, Rossman Thompson syndrome with osteosarcoma and skin tumors. Dyskeratosis congenita can be associated with many cancers. Marfan syndrome with thyroid tumors. McCune Albright syndrome with breast tumors. Silver Russell syndrome can be associated with testicular cancer, uh, liver cancer, and brain tumors. Diamond Blackfen and Schwachmann Diamond syndrome. Puts Jaegers, where they have multiple, uh, these kinds of multiple lesions in the mouth and everywhere. Neurofibromatosis associated with optic nerve gliomas, peripheral nerve, brain, spinal cord. This is very common. Sturge Weber syndrome. Sometimes you see people like that and they need to know that they have a high risk of developing tumors. Ataxia telangiectasia where the chromosomal instability can cause leukemia and lymphoma, and Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome, which is an immunodeficiency, just like all the inherited immunodeficiencies, which can uh, have a higher tendency to develop cancers. So in conclusion, childhood cancers have a strong and previously underestimated genetic component. Now we have identified many cancer predisposing syndromes, and due to the consequences of the underlying uh, cancer predisposing syndrome on toxicity, on treatment response, and on the risk of secondary malignancies. We need more awareness, and this is why, you know, I would like to thank CCI for raising awareness about this topic and putting this high on the agenda of the discussion today. So cancer surveillance in, is very important in children who have uh, an inherited tendency and have a high cancer risk. Uh, cancer treatment sometimes needs to be adapted to these patients, like for example, Fanconi patients have high toxicity and they have special protocols for them. And we have to recognize that many children with cancer have yet an unrecognized uh, in, uh, inherited or a cancer predisposition syndrome. In some cases, the tumor can be the first indication of an underlying cancer predisposing syndrome. And technologies like next generation sequencing, et cetera, without going into the molecular uh, diagnosis details, can help clarify the genetic uh, basis of childhood cancer in more details. So it's very critical for families to give the doctors a detailed history and a pedigree and be aware of these syndromes and of this association. But what also I want to reassure the families that not everyone with an altered gene develops cancer. There are also environmental factors uh, related to behavioral things like carcinogens in the environment and cigarette, hormonal factors, and other uh, responses to sun and DNA damages which modify our genetic risk. And let's not forget that even if we have in all our cells an inherited tendency to develop cancer, this doctor called Knudsen has a theory called the two-hit model, 
uh, saying that only heredity is not enough. We need a second hit, either an infection, a virus, something that will uh, stimulate the system to develop cancer. So even if we have a genetic tendency, it doesn't mean we are going 100% to develop a tumor. So finally, the take home message is to keep a high index of suspicion, raise awareness among the families and the doctors, and ask for uh, always for questions and information. And I would like to thank you.